Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. It's the connection service. We are looking forward to a time together where we can worship. Uh, it's a wonderful time to be able to praise God and uh, thank God for the many, many blessings that we have and also come to God for our needs. We're hoping that these next few minutes will be an inspiration to you, that you will feel uh, connected to God and to each other. We hope that you'll take a minute and do and look down in the comments and perhaps uh, put your name in the comments or say hello to us. I want to tell you that in just a minute, I'm going to put our contact information in the comments because I'm about ready to tell you several announcements and I want you to be able to uh, call us at the church office later this week if you need to. We have two or three things I want to uh, tell you about, the stuff that's going on in the life of the church. On Tuesday mornings at 9 o'clock, we're gathering for prayer time uh, over the phone or over the internet. And if you will contact us, we can give you the way to do that. The numbers are the same that you dial if you've been doing it the last couple of weeks. We only spend just a few minutes together, but it is a great way to connect and to learn about um, the ways that um, we are seeing God and the ways that we are asking God for so I hope that you'll do that. That's Tuesday at 9 o'clock. Uh, we also have just gotten in a good bit of equipment to improve our technical abilities so that we can continue to do these uh, worship services online. Even after we are back in the building, we feel like it's going to be an important uh, thing to do. And so we are uh, looking for a few good volunteers who would like to help learn about the tech team. If you are interested, let us know. Um, we definitely want to uh, include you in that. Um, it's a perfect opportunity because we are all going to be learning how to do that right now. Um, and I uh, had a third thing, but I'm going to just say it was really important. It was the number three thing, but you know what? We will just let it go. Can you think about it before prayer time? Yeah, I'll whisper it and we'll do it during prayer time. Let's worship.
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. She got back to our seat and went, I knew what I was going to say earlier. <laughs> you know, uh, again, with uh, the way we were having to adjust and do things in a different way during this time of uh, the pandemic and, and closing the building. But we do want to continue with um, small group or Bible studies and small groups. So what we're going to be doing and, and asking you to do, if you are interested in connecting up with a smaller group, for study, for fellowship, for connectedness. Um, we'll be doing this by right now by way of Zoom or, or electronically. Uh, hopefully one day we'll be back and these same groups can come together uh, as groups. But let us know, please. Contact us by way of call the church office. Um, leave your, your, your name even in the comments and let us know, first of all, your name. If you're interested at all, this is not signing up. You're interested in being a part of a small group. Uh, we need your name. We need a day and time that is uh, works best for you, preferable for you, and would really love to know what you are most interested in studying. Is it uh, Bible study, spiritual formation, um, practices of prayer, or anything else? We're as we're putting this together, we want to hear from you. So please, as quickly as you can, let us know so we can begin to form these small groups and. Um, and look forward to some time to study. And with that, I think that is all the announcements that we have. And so uh, as we go into this time of prayer, the one thing I do want to mention to you is that this week we celebrated the life of uh, First Methodist, our, our oldest living member, uh, Ms. Velma Taylor. Uh, at 101 years old, she left this earth and is now celebrating and living in heaven. Um, what a wonderful uh, impact she had on this church, on the lives of so many, many, many people. We did want to be in prayer for our family, and especially you know, for Harry and, and Lynn and, um, and this other family that, that went about. And just pray that they will be able to celebrate this really well-lived, uh, long life in this film. With that, I invite us to this time. Oh, holy God, you truly are great. You are the name above all names, the name above all that this earth can bring. Lord, you are the one who wakes us and brings sunshine into our day. You are the one who gives us the very breath in our bodies. You are the one who is there for us when our days on this earth have ended and come to take us home. It is with that good news that we are able to celebrate for Miss Velma Taylor. 101 years that you gave her life on this earth, and she used those years so well to bless us, to bless her church, to be a kingdom builder, to be involved in the lives of children, and, and to be all about the, the business of education for Christians and teaching us your way. God, we pray uh, for her family as they grieve for her, as they certainly miss her physical presence. But what a wonderful day of rejoicing it must be for her to gather with the saints in heaven and to praise you around your heavenly throne. Lord, we pray that for those of us who are left here, those of us who are still carrying the mantle that uh, the, the carrying on the co-laborers with you in the building of your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, that God, you will continue to lead us during a time that is so unprecedented as we are trying to uh, make our way uh, in, in, in faithfulness and service. Lord, just show us 
Send your Holy Spirit to guide us, to give us wisdom and insight as your church. Help us to learn how to be the church in a way we've never been in the church before. Lord, nothing uh, in your powerful name is impossible. And so we know that you will lead and guide us through this time and in the times to come. We ask that you would bless us during this time of worship. Lord, that you would uh, connect us around the community, in our homes, around uh, the, the globe, wherever we, your people are coming together to worship today. And Lord, we ask that you would hear us as one voice as well. One voice as we pray together the prayer that uh, Jesus taught us. When together we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the kingdom and the glory forever.
you, Jason. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate that. And Christy and Lily behind the scenes. So, uh, and you may ask, what does that song have to do with the sermon? Absolutely nothing. We just like that song. <laughs> Today we will be in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 14, starting in verse 13. And it says, Now when Jesus heard this, and when we say he heard this, that was the death of his cousin John the Baptist. When Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place. Oh. Oh, thank you. When the disciples, when it, the disciples came to him and said, when it was evening, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away if you give them something to eat. Let me read, read, read. We're going to go over the tongue tie this morning, y'all. <laughs> Jesus said to them. They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. We finally got it out. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We start off by Jesus getting some bad news. Jesus had heard that his cousin, John the Baptist, had been killed. He had been in prison. And if you want a steamy and gory and uh, juicy story, go back and read that sometime about the circumstances around John the Baptist's death. Uh, it, it's, it's pretty interesting. Uh, but this affected Jesus, obviously. His cousin has passed away, and so Jesus withdrew, it says, in a boat to a deserted place. He went back out into the wilderness. See, Jesus needed to just get away for a few minutes. It's important that we do that sometimes. And it says, but when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the town. Jesus is trying to get away. The crowds find out where he is. And they go. You know, it would be so much easier sometimes if somebody said, you know what, Jesus is at this location here. We can pull it up on the phones. We have the exact address. Here it is. Let's go see Jesus. But we all have to find Jesus in our way. We find Jesus in, uh, in, in different places. Now, yes, what's frustrating is sometimes we have to Move to find Jesus. Yes, we have to move. Are you willing to move sometimes to go find Jesus, to go be closer to Jesus? Are you willing to go through a little bit of wilderness to find Jesus? Now, probably if we knew we were going to find him, I think about it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, find, it's kind of like working out puzzles. I love to work out puzzles. I love writing teasers. I love anything that you got to kind of work out and try to figure out. I love that stuff. But I work on it harder if I know there's a solution. You know, some of these puzzles you work with, and some of the, even the word puzzles and the, the little things that you do, there's not always a clear solution. There's not always a, a clear answer. I don't waste my time with it. I want the ones that I know there's an answer. I know what I'm going to do, and I will work as long as it 
for Jesus, we have to go through those steps spiritually. We have to be moved spiritually. We have to be in uncomfortable places spiritually sometimes. It's not always easy. The Bible says that when he went ashore, he saw the great crowd and he had compassion for them and he cured their sick. And when you read this from the Greek, it says that he was moved with compassion. Sometimes as Christians, we forget that step. Now, I don't think as Christians, most of us, we do have compassion. We have a lot of compassion. You see something, you see somebody or something that's going through a hard time, and, and you're moved, and, and it does move you, and you think, oh, oh, well, I wish there was something I could do. And then we forget about it and go on the next thing, right? If we've done our Christian duty, we have felt bad for somebody, right? Maybe we even offered up a little bit of prayer. But if you've ever been, uh, had compassion for something or so, someone so much where you were physically moved to take an action, that's real compassion. That's Christian compassion. And I, and I'm thankful that Jesus does have compassion. Jesus shows us real compassion. Because this compassion is accompanied with action, moved to compassion. Jesus cured their sickness. He cured their sick people. And they were out there for so long that the sun started to go down. And the disciples said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages to buy food for themselves. What was it? Well, the Bible tells us about it, but you think about it. What would, what would make people not want to leave and go back home? What would make people want to stay when they're obviously hungry? When they're obviously hungry. You know it says that there were women and children there along with it. You know the babies are getting hungry. But no, we're going to stay. We're going to stay. We're going to watch these miracles. We are, we are going to watch people be healed and be healed ourselves and listen, be in the presence of this man. We're not worried about earthly food because they were getting fed spiritually. They were getting fed spiritually. But the disciples said, let's send them away. Friends, sometimes it's just easier to send people away. It's just easier. You know, we can uh, do what we can for people, but it's just easier just to send people away. And as the church, we send people away. We do. There's a reason why, uh, why the church attendance, even before the pandemic, was because we send people away. Now, we may not say those words. We may not say, go away. <laughs> we, might not, we might not physically and with those words say, get out of here. Y'all go away. But the church does that in our other actions. Sometimes we are not as welcoming as we should be. And you would think that you come into the doors of a church, a church should be the most welcoming place there is. It's not. I know that. I've been in a lot of churches, and you have people that won't look at you, they won't speak to you, they look at you like you are some kind of an invader or alien in their space. Well, I wonder nobody wants to go back to that church. Because more often than not, when somebody is going into church for the first time in a long time, they are searching. You are searching. Probably if you're listening to me now, there's been a time where you have been searching, you have been needing Jesus, you are prepared to go through the wilderness to that uncomfortable place of going inside a building or a place where you didn't know anybody or anything. And there was either, either a warm reception or there was a cold reception. Warm reception or a cold reception. We have to be careful as church people that we are not sending people away. Now, I understand very well that it's not in everybody's personality to walk up to a stranger and act like you're a long lost friend. <laughs> I know that. I know that that is very awkward for some folks. I totally get that. And that's okay. But for those of you who, who don't feel awkward like that, it is up to you. And I'm one of those people. I can, I can, you know, it's been said 
I probably go and have a conversation with a tree, you know, and, and maybe even get something out of it, right? You know, I, I don't have a problem talking to people. And so that's, but it's people, it's people who don't have problems like that who need to take that extra step to make people feel welcome. And it's not only in the four walls of this church. It's when we are out there, it's when we are in the wilderness. We come across people every day who are in the wilderness searching for Jesus. And any time they see you as a church person, you as a Christian, it is up to you to reach out to guide people through their wilderness and show them where Jesus is. I don't know where he is. I can take you to him. Not, well, somebody else do it. That's the preacher's job. That's the Sunday school teacher's job. Let somebody else do it. Ah, so boy, Jesus turns it around in the way that Jesus can. And Jesus says to the disciples, no, no they don't need to go away. <laughs> and then Jesus says, you give them something to eat. Oh, you know, some of the stories I would have liked to have been present at, some I would not like to have been present at. This is one I would have liked to have been at. I would have loved to have seen the look on the disciples' faces when Jesus turned around and there's 5,000 people, some scholars say, within the children, there's as much as 15,000 people. 15,000 people. Friends, that is a lot of people. And if you ain't got no food, you got a big problem. A huge problem. And these disciples knew that they were fixing to have a, a, a holy mob on their hands if they weren't going to give these folks some food. And then Jesus puts it off on them to go and feed these people? He sure did. But you know, as Christians, kind of like we talked about a couple of weeks ago with the seed sowers, as Christians, as people, we are sowing seeds. As Christians, as people, we are already feeding people. You feed people. You are feeding the people that are around you. And quite frankly, some of you feed better spiritual food than others. <laughs> We're not always in the great mood to, to, to feed the people who are needing good spiritual food. But it, it, we are always feeding, whether we want to or not, whether we are aware of it or not. But sometimes we get caught up and we feel like we have to feed them uh, food and spirit that comes from us when we are able to feed them spiritual food and spirit that comes from God. And that nourishes everybody's soul. And it's free. It's free. Paid for by Jesus. The disciples replied, we have nothing. Now, I know there are so many who want to be involved, who want to do things, who are moved to compassion, they want to get active, they want to help, they want to serve in some way, but they say, I have nothing. I have nothing to offer. Well, if you have Jesus, if you have the Spirit, have something, even if it's just a smile, even if it's just a smile, you can roll your eyes open. that's it, no, 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 let me just tell you something, a smile, a friendly gesture does so much for someone who is at the end of their road, someone who is going through life at this time when one more straw is going to break that camel's back, yes, even a smile, something, anything, you have something. But what they say here, there's that word, but. We have nothing, but, that's a big but. Jesus can take that and really work with it. We have five loaves and two fish. God can take that little thing and make it a miracle. Make it a miracle. And you're right. We who have nothing can do nothing. We who have little, there's not a whole lot we can do. Unless God's involved and God can take a little and turn it into a whole lot. I love stories about people who have started huge things with a little bit of nothing. I love those stories. We should hear about those all the time. Jesus said, bring them here. So we have to bring what little we have to Jesus and then watch Jesus work miracles. It has been happening for thousands of years. It's happening today and it's going to happen tomorrow. And until
five loaves and two fish. He looked up to heaven. He blessed and broke the loaves, gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. You know, sometimes we are so uh, we are so quick and so anxious to complain to God about what we don't have. And I'm kind of bad about that. I'm going to be honest with you. I, there are so I, sometimes I get so caught up in what I need and what I don't have as opposed to what I have. But Jesus took these small little things that most people would say, "Why are you even bothering with this?" And He praised God for it. Thank you, God. He shared it. And this is kind of a precursor. Jesus loved to take that bread. He loved to break the bread, symbolizing his body that was broken. One of these days, hopefully, we'll get to have communion. We should be having communion this morning. Oh, it hurts my soul that we cannot have communion and share in communion together. I miss that so bad. But we'll get back there. We'll get back there. Jesus gave the bread to his disciples, and the disciples gave to the people. You see, the job of a disciple or a learner, if you are one person who is trying to learn more about Jesus, if you are a learner, then you are a disciple. And it was the disciples who physically fed the people. The disciples. Bible says, and all ate, and all were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, and there were twelve baskets full, twelve baskets full of leftovers of fish and bread. They probably ate fish sandwiches for a month after that. <laughs> Talk about leftovers. You see, this shows how God goes above and beyond. He didn't just feed people just enough to kind of uh, nourish their appetite. They ate until they were full, it says. And then God just didn't give people just enough to eat until their food grew up. He went above and beyond that. They ate until they were full, and then they had 12 baskets of leftovers. We are the ones that put limitations on God. It's us. When we sit back and we ask the great things of God, God can do great things. He has done great things. He's doing great things and will continue to do great things. As a disciple, as a learner, though, it is important that we ourselves keep ourselves spiritually full. Spiritually full. Now, y'all know like I do, you go through seasons where you are sometimes spiritually empty. And it's hard to, uh, it's hard to feed people spiritually when you are spiritually empty. That's why it's important to tune in and to hone in and stay prayed up, to stay full of the Spirit. I was watching, you know, we always talk about the YouTube rabbit hole. And how you start, you know, I said, one day I'm going to keep track of where I start on YouTube and where I wind up on YouTube. You know, where I try to look up a recipe about how to grill on a steak, and then I'm watching some obscure documentary on UFOs, and somehow I get back to uh, some old gospel concert or something. How do I get from A, Z to B to wherever? And so in that, this, uh, this past week, I was watching a little mini documentary Just enough. 
enough to get me through this hour. That's the way our minds think sometimes. We're putting limitations on God. Instead of saying, God, give me an overflow, an overflow of your spirit, an overflow. Because that's where you can minister to other people. That's where you get that strength. That's where the spirit comes from. Verse 21 says, And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. They all ate. They were healed. They had been fed physically. They had been fed spiritually. And don't you know there was such an excitement that went out from that area? All that we would be that excited. Oh, that we can fill people spiritually. That you can fill those around you until they overflow as well. In closing, I'll say that without coming here in the building, we may feel like we're in the wilderness. We may feel like we are in the wilderness. The wilderness can be a place for temptation. You think about when Jesus went to the wilderness. He was tempted. He was hungry. He was down. Uh, the wilderness is a place of uneasiness. The wilderness is a place of uncertainty. The wilderness is a place of just basic fear. You find Jesus in that wilderness. Jesus was feeding people while they were in that wilderness. Just like Jesus can feed you in your wilderness, and not only just enough, but with abundance. Twelve baskets full of leftovers. You see, that's the God who we serve. That's the God who we're thankful for. That's the God who, uh, whose message we are to share. And I hope this week that you will not seek to just be nourished, but to have an overflow of God's Spirit. So much that you can share. So much that you have to share it with others. Let's pray. Father, as we all go through our different kind of wildernesses, Lord, we find comfort because you're in the wilderness too. And not only are you just surviving in the wilderness, but thriving in the wilderness. Lord, we are always grateful and thankful. Lord, help us to not take your love and your spirit for granted. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus who paid it all. And Lord, it's in his name we, we pray these things. It's in, in his name our hearts cry out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.